1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Yeah, we coming in hot today. We just... Next verse, Mark chapter 8, 35 through 36. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it benefit a person to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Last scripture before we pray. Matthew Come to me. This is Jesus speaking these last two scriptures. Uh, All who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. I I love that people were reading along. Let's just do that. Let's do that. I'm just going to start bringing new things every time I preach. Let's all say this together. One, it's short enough. One, two, three. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. That feels good when we say it together. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, I ask that um, you just give me the strength. Uh, I say this kiddingly, but I say this also earnestly, Lord, above everything right now, Lord, to preach this in actually 20 minutes, Lord. <laughs> but I, be- I pray beyond that, that you open our hearts, that you move in this moment. You know what I am getting ready to preach. And I just ask that this may be a moment that I am forgotten about, that people even forget that I preach today because all they remember is how powerfully you move, that they forget who was on the worship team, that they forget it all, and they just remember you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Guys, I'm feeling good today. I texted like so many people that I believe God is moving. Um, I'm also very enthusiastic. I came from an NF concert yesterday. As, I don't know if you guys could tell. I'm just like merched out. Uh, I wasn't a merch person, I thought. And then I went to an NF concert. It was awesome. I also got to see a side of my wife that I thought was reserved for me when we fight. But some lady, some young woman was trying to cause a ruckus because there was a fiasco with the seats and immediately she's like, this isn't even the attic though, I'm just fitting it in here because I need to tell you guys. They were, um, there were some people who came late and they're like, you guys are in our seats to this girl, but we have shifted over, yada, yada, yada. She just gets up out of nowhere and she's like, I don't know where you guys came from, but clearly these are not your seats. And I didn't even process it, so I'm just like talking. I don't even, I don't know. Anyway, so I'm just talking. I'm like, no, but I can tell that this is our section, and this is what set my wife off, which is, like, I feel so protected. (laughs) I'm like, oh, this is what Pastor Roe feels like, Willie. She goes, the woman turns to me. She goes, "Um, can you count? I know. I know. I didn't even, I was going to say, yeah, I could count. I, I had no idea what was happening. I was just so ignorant to it, you know, and Amanda was just, I don't even know how to describe it. I'm not going to even describe it. But what I know is that the woman did not speak for the rest of the night. <laughs> Afterward, Amanda addressed it. I was like, baby, I felt so protected. Um, Amanda Byers was sitting with her, with us. She was like, oh, good. I don't have to, like, I don't have to ask for forgiveness today. Cause... <sighs> but speaking of my wife, this will now get us into our, ac- our anecdote. And I could preach. I got 15 minutes. Dang, that took five minutes. Okay. <laughs> but then you guys got us to worship. Um, I think I want, I want to talk to you about juxtapositions today. Anybody know what that is? Am I, like, giving you English class lessons? Uh, a lot of people might say that me and my wife are a juxtaposition. What a juxtaposition is, is uh, two contrasting elements that come together to bring out a point. So you might see this in art or photography, like a flower blossoming in the middle of a storm. 
you know, that's a juxtaposition. Or, like, I've been going to the gym a lot lately. I don't know if you guys could tell. <sighs> um, I've noticed that there's a lot of fast food restaurants next to gyms. That's a bit of, like, you know, like, juxtaposition. Two opposites coming together. I feel like me and my wife, Amanda, are a little bit of a juxtaposition. Like, you know, she has this poise and this elegance. Uh, a friend of her calls her their quiet lion because she's quiet but fierce. And I'm, well, you guys know me. I'm loud. I'm clumsy. Every time I take a sip of this water, you guys tense up. You're like, please make it to his mouth, Lord. Please make it to his mouth and not on the floor. I'm messy. I'm brash. I'm arrogant. And Amanda is delicate and quiet and smooth. She takes video. I don't know if you guys were here during the Kuha or when I was on video. When I was on Kuha video, the camera looked like this. She takes it. It's so smooth and crisp. We're two opposites that have come together and done life. And every time we come together, it's the funniest thing because we are such opposites. We are so different. And I guess opposites do attract. Hey. Um, but I, I introduced the concept of juxtapositions because these three scriptures, uh, Matthew and Mark, go very well together. We're talking about the soul. We're talking about rest for our soul. In Mark, you have for whoever wants to save his life but uh, will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake um, will save it. So what does it benefit a person to gain the world and forfeit his soul. But then in Matthew, you have Jesus saying, come to me, those who are weary, and I will give you rest for your souls. But in Peter, what I'm presenting to you guys today is be on alert. Your adversary, uh, the devil, he's prowling and he's seeking to devour you. It seems a little bit like a juxtaposition. And I honestly came in here ready to preach a juxtaposition, seemingly contrasting points uh, that would come together. Because if I can just be honest and transparent with you guys, I, two things have been on my heart as I've prepared for this sermon. The, the, the one thing is I've just, as a pastor of this house, as a leader, I've just been privy to so many details. And I've just been so aware to the heartache that's been happening in our, in our church. People have just been going through things. People are tired here in this church, burnt out. If we can just, as a matter of fact, just do an exercise, if we could all close our eyes. Everybody close your eyes. And just, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if this rings true. If in the last month or two months, you have felt like you've been brought to the end of your rope, if you've said to God, I don't know if I can do this, if you have spent some days or nights weeping, could you just raise your hand? Okay. We're going we're gonna to keep the hands up. Put them back up. I saw you guys. Now I'm just studying. Who has ADHD? Who put their hand down? Math fast. Moved on. If your life has been okay the last season, but you know what it's like to be at the end of the, your rope and feeling like you're about to give up. If you've just been there at some point in your life, could you put up a hand? Could we all just keep our hands up? Some people got two hands up. That's too true. Could you just open your eyes right there online? You could just type in the comments. That's me. It's all of us. It's all of us. We have been going through it. Some of us just know what it's like to go through it. And I, right now, I struggle to want to sell it and bring you to this emotional place. But the truth of the matter is, I get you. I think you get me in this moment. It's been difficult. I, I came to preach to a church that's tired, to a church that's burnt out, to a church that has been going through it. But, but on the other hand, the juxtaposition is that I feel like in the midst of this, the enemy's just been lurking. And I'm not, I'm not the devil guy. You know, you, you won't really ever see me preach. Diablo afuera! You won't. I'm just not that guy. 
when people do manifest, I try to do it very discreetly. I'm like, yo, bro, just get out, get out, bro. I'm not the guy. But I've just felt this overwhelming sensation that our church, just, and not just our church, not to single us out, but there has just been some prowling going on and I'm just like yeah I want them to also just be on alert just be on alert like every time I've had a conversation with someone I've just been like hey I know what you're going through what you're going through but these are just swipes and sucker punches from a losing enemy because the fact of the matter is for those of you who are here we have a lot of a few new people here I want to welcome you guys say hi um And you've just come to a very intimate moment with us. And so I encourage you to be open with us because I know maybe you're going through it. Um, anybody that I've been talking to, I've, I've said, hey, I think these are sucker punches. And I just know that Christ Uncensored has been moving. Like we are moving. There are things that have been unexplainable. There have been things. I think it's just because we finally listened to Pastor Lee. She said it's in the building and now we're all finally in agreement. Like, okay, fine. It's in the building. But God has been moving in such a breakthrough way um, in our finances. It's crazy. We're about to have our vision builder Sunday and I know it's going to be powerful the way we're coming together. And Regal Cinema just shut down. I said, sorry to them, but thank you, Lord, for our building. <laughs> uh, but I just know that God is moving here. And these are just distractions. Me and my wife have already, like, it's down to a science for us. We're not perfect, but it's down to a science to at least know that the enemy is using us against each other. Amanda figured it out first. She's like, the devil's using you. He's using you. Ooh, why you let? Now our fights are this. Why are you letting the devil use you so much? Why are you letting him use you? Don't let him use you. I'm mad at the spirit behind you. <laughs> Fix it, Jesus. Uh, but we're just aware that he's been on the move. And, and here I am trying to harmonize these two things. And then I just did this very theological, super scholarly um, thing that I learned at NIAC, which was, I read more than the verse. I like read the other verses in the chapter. Hey, yo, it was very illuminating. <laughs> this is where this text, be of a sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking, seeking someone to devour, comes in. 1 Peter 5, we're going we're gonna to read the sandwich. This verse is sandwiched, 6 through 11. It says, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, so that he might exalt you at the proper time, having cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares about you. Be of sober spirit. Be on the alert, your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. So resist him, firm in your faith. Remember when we all raised our hands? We're all suffering together. Knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brothers and sisters who are in the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself Perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. Peter is writing this to a community who's in pain. They are dealing with anxiety. They are dealing with suffering. And the type of suffering that's usually going on in these letters is persecution, is being hunted down, is being imprisoned, is being killed. They are grieving loved ones. They are in pain. They are anxious. And the text of be on alert, the enemy is looking out to devour you, is in the midst of a juxtaposition. It is in the midst of you are suffering, you are in pain, you are grieving. Hey, be on alert. Because here's my crazy theory. Maybe that's when we're the most vulnerable. 
that in our time of pain, in our time of being triggered, in our time of trauma, in our time, I'm about to make a year being married, of just being married, um, <laughs> it's a very vulnerable season, in our time of grief, in our time of anger, in our time of hurt, uh, my mom, I know I just switched up on you guys, my mom loves lights. I don't know why, but just lights everywhere. Like, my house has motion lights. It's just, you just walk in lights. She loves lights so much, she said, I don't want switches. I just want me to walk, turn on. There's a light. There's a light on the front of our house. Every time, I, th yesterday I saw, what was it, a grasshopper on, a, on my wall of my front door. And she, I'm like, baby, is that a cricket? She's like, no, that's a grasshopper. It's weird, because it's not a wall hopper, but it's on a wall. Um, that was her joke, so. The grass, like all kinds of bugs, it would be perfect for your vivarium, Jack. All kinds of bugs right here. Why? Because the light's on. Could it be that when we are in grief, that we are vulnerable, when we are dealing with anxiety, when we are dealing with pain, when we are suffering, when we are dealing with anger, the lights, that is the light being on that attracts all kinds of attack from the enemy. And it's funny because we rave about the strength of lions, but lions really hunt the weakest link. They look for the wounded. They look for the slowest runner. They look for the weak target. So the lights have been on in our lives. And I know that grief has been heavy. Tire, tiredness, exhaustion has been heavy among you. The title of my message, I'm very late into it, but is this. Lay it down. What, and if you, if you would just humor me again. Here's a question, it's not rhetorical. If you would be brave enough and bold enough to say it out loud. Or whisper it. Or say it in your mind. Or write it in your phone. What did you come in carrying today? Mark says, whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. I think so often we can get caught up in these vulnerable moments that we start fighting for our lives. The, the walk of a Christian is so difficult because self-help doesn't really work because we understand that we couldn't help ourselves. <laughs> so there's, there's no call here. Like, I don't have a five-point practical, and usually I do. You guys know I'm a big fan of counseling. It's usually like my take-home point, get therapy. It's still my take-home point. Um, but... A therapist, a mentor of mine herself has, has criticized Christian counseling in this regard and, sa and said this. If we are not leading people to Jesus, who is the only person who can transform lives, who is the only person that can set the captives free. If we are not leading people to Jesus, even in ca Christian counseling, what makes us any different from regular self-help therapy? There is just a difference when you understand your Savior there is a difference. There are people who have had not had to do any of it just because Christ's name set them free. But we can so easily get caught up in fighting to save our lives. I know because Jonathan Hernandez, everybody look at him, drowned me. He drowned me. Like a seal. I mean, just in his pool. I thought it was going to be a friendly day. Next thing, after telling him my trauma with drowning... He's, he's trying to do what I do with other people, fierce exposure therapy. Just we're going we're gonna to get to the root of this trauma. And what I found is I was fighting to save my life. But in fighting so hard to save my life, I was actually creating the very thing that would cause me to drown. Like in the fighting, I would, <gasps> but I'm still underwater. And, you know. You guys are so great. Very just tender hearts here. Let me hear your traumas, okay, guys? No. 
But in the midst of fighting more, mind you, I'm like really good at swimming underwater. So if I would have just stopped trying to come up and I would have just, I would have been fine. That's a whole other thing. But in the midst of fighting more to save my life, I found myself sinking deeper. Because when we begin fighting to heal our own wounds and fighting to protect our own inner child and fighting to get past our own grief and our own anger and our own frustration, our own depression, our own anxiety, we start to fix our eyes on the wrong thing. And over and over and over and over and over, the Bible says, fix your eyes on Jesus. In this scripture, it says, whoever loses his life, just let it go. For my sake. We'll save it. Could it be the thing that you've been holding on to to save your life so, for so long is the very thing that's drowning you? And if you would just let it, da- let it go, you would find salvation. For what does it benefit a person? Because then we start acquiring all these things that are really security blankets into us feeling safe. What does it benefit a person to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? In Matthew, he says, come to me. What are you carrying that's been burdening you? All who are weary, what are you carrying? And worship team, you can come up, I'm done. What are you carrying that has been wearing you out? And I will give you rest. Oh, there it is, I almost spilled it. I will give you rest. I get really into, like, video games and stuff like that, and I found the other day I was, like, binging video games and, like, TV and, like, and I just kept telling Amanda, like, I just want to chill. Like, I just, I just want to chill. Like, that's why I'm, like, so fixated because then I'm trying to chill doing the thing that I know that I've done my whole life and has always been so dope. And, you know, I, I catch dubs with the boys and I feel great and, like, what? And I'm just still feeling more anxious in my downtime after a whole day of doing the thing that I want, but I don't feel restful. And then I threw my back out. 29's coming for me hard. With a vengeance. Nobody told me that's how you graduate your 20s. Things start breaking down. And I was in so much pain that I couldn't even do anything that like really helped me a lot that I had to concentrate on. And I just threw on a movie, laid on a yoga mat on the floor. It was a three hour movie, it was Avatar, because I woke up so disturbed by the pain that I was like, what's something that will just, you know, whatever. Point is, that was the first time I was actually restful. Like, I was trying for weeks to just like, you know, like, I'm tired. I just want to chill. I just want to, and this is the thing that's going to give me rest. But no, like, it was actually the doing of nothing that allowed my mind and my body and my physical self to be replenished. And in a spiritual way, I think we are chasing after things that will give us rest in these trying times. But that's not what gives you rest for your soul. So you do it and you're like, ah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. And, I'm, and, and you just still feel this anxiety because you haven't casted it onto him. This is just the thought I had as I read that, cast your cares. Um, could it be, and I don't say this in a shaming way, I just say this to diagnose maybe the situation here. In my professional opinion, I have a bachelor's degree. Could it be that we don't cast our anxiety onto him because we have a hard time believing he actually cares about us? I don't say that to shame you. I say that to help you see what maybe the problem is. You're trying this, so I'm going to use this because I can't spell. You're just like, here, God. You can have it. Did I hit somebody? Sorry, Lisa. But we're stuck on the casting. And when if we truly believe that he cared, he just let it go. I want to tell you that your adversary, the devil, is prowling church, community. He's probably, he's after you. He is trying to distract us as leadership. A couple months ago, I was just telling my wife, you good, you good becoming pastor and I'll just hang up the jersey because I think I've put my time. I was really there. 
just tired of heartbreak, of burden, of loss. I'm just like, you know? He's just out to distract us from fulfilling our purpose and our mission because when we know that, we will be unstoppable. Lives will be saved. Lives will be transformed. If we all put our hands up, if Kuhau has been a blessing to you, can you raise your hand? You can make some noise. There's many more where that came from. There's many more hands that will go up for the anxiety and the pain and the grief, but then many more hands that will go up and say, but Jesus came and saved my soul. There's many more hands when we understand who Jesus is and we stop being distracted by, by, the, by the enemy, when we stop falling for the tricks and just stepping into worship, because I promise you, it's not go speak in tongues in your prayer closet to cancel the devil out. That's good, that's helpful. But what it is, is understanding that your daddy cares for you. He cares for you. It's not your fight. You don't got to fight to save your life. Just let it go. Whatever you've come in carrying with, whatever you've come in burdened with, just let it go. Come to me. Can we stand on our feet? He says, come to me. All who are weary and burdened. It's not fighting your enemy. It's knowing who to run to when he's attacking. Peter says, resist him. That's not go at him. That's actually resist him. Shoulder check him. Stand firm. Know that you have a community going through it with you. And it is God. He says he himself. He himself. Will, will perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. It's not you go strengthen yourself. It's you run to the one who will. Run to the one who will strengthen you. Run to the one who, run to the one who will perfect you. Run to the one who will establish you. And so that's what I want us to do today. I want us to lay it all down before him. Whatever you've come in with, would you just lay it down today? Is that something you guys could take me up on today? I want to hear some noise. I want to hear a yes. Is that something you guys are ready to take me up on today?